So before you have the person come and tie up all their time, I bring everything in the room, I set up and open everything so that when my helper comes, because you're dragging them away from their patient care, they're able to help you pre-oxygenate and then they can leave out. So that way you're not tying up too much of their time. So when you first open your kits, your gloves are on top there and this is on top even on your um, suction catheter kit. And this here, you can just take it and pop it open. And this is so that you're, you can either pour the saline yourself or if, if you were to put on sterile gloves, then your helper could pour saline in there for you. So it's however you want to do it. I'm going to put it over here at this side. Since I'm over here, I'm going to be suctioning on this side. So you can pre-fill that yourself with the saline. So you have two sets of sterile gloves, one for your suction kit, one for the um, care and cleaning. So I just open everything up and I'm going to use the gloves that are here first. So I grab the first glove, and as you can see, the ones in your kit are not, I don't know if, yours may actually be in paper, mine isn't. Now I want to go ahead and put a drape down because whenever you suction, you never know if you're going to get a mucus plug, so I'm going to pull it from out of this shirt because my hands are sterile. Now in the video, the sterile portion is when you actually suction your patient, shiny side down. Because the last thing you want to do is to push some bacteria or germs down into their trachea, which goes directly into their lungs. So in the video, they have a dominant hand and a non-dominant hand. So your dominant hand, you want it to be sterile. I can do either hand. So I'm going to make my right hand my dominant hand, and it's going to be sterile. So my left hand is non-sterile. I'm just basically going to take the end of this. This is no longer sterile. I connect it to the end. This is sterile. This isn't. I turn my suction on. Now to do the suctioning, you put your thumb over this. You're keeping this part sterile because if you contaminate this, you're pushing bacteria into the lungs. You don't want to do that. So you can test your suction with the fluid, making sure that it goes in and completely clears the tube and everything's fine. So at this point, you would tell your helper, okay, go ahead and pre-oxygenate, giving two breaths. You're completely set up and ready to go. So they give two breaths. Once they're done, okay, I'm going to suction. You go back as far as you can into their their um, through their trach until you can no longer go anymore because you'll feel the, they'll feel the back if they're awake and they may it may induce a cough you don't suction on your way in you only suction on your way out so now you're going to suction on your way out going to completely come out okay so that was the first pass you're going to do it again give them a little bit a, a couple seconds to rest you're going to do it again you go in a second time same thing until you feel the back and then you suction coming out you do two passes you have your helper pre-oxygenate again. If they still have a lot more junk, they still sound like they're congested, then you keep passing until they feel better or until their, um, their oxygenation saturation improves. But you just keep doing it. But you only do it twice. You give them a breath, give them time to recover, do it twice again, give them breaths. Now, if you happen to do this, and on your way out, and you feel like you have a mucus plug, you stay on the suction to pull it out. So once you feel that you have like a booger, you keep your finger on it and pull it out. That's how you get out and you'll see it dangling on the end. So that's why I go ahead and put this down now because I don't want it all over their gown and everything. So this is, this is really the sterile part. It is this suction and this hand and going in and out. So the last thing you want to do is for this to touch all this and then you're pushing that down into their lungs. All right, so once you're done with that, okay, we're good to go. Now I'm going to do your, I'm going to change your suction dressing and the tie. So this is where now, okay, you can separate all this. You're done with this. So if you want it, you could ball this up into your glove, th toss it, throw it away. What I go ahead and do before I put on my second pair of gloves is you go ahead and remove this dressing. So like they were saying, the care part is more of, I don't want to throw it away because I'm going to have to use it again. It's more of a clean technique, so you're done with the sterile part, but you still want to basically kind of stay clean. So I take these gloves off. So now I'm ready for my clean kit. So 
Now it's up to you if you want your helper to stay because you don't have to pre-oxygenate anymore. They're able to breathe. They shouldn't have any problems. So I could take my gloves out. Um, oh, so yeah, I opened this tray fresh. So you could go ahead and pour your saline into where you see the Q-tips and everything. So you could do that yourself. Your helper can leave and go back to their patient care. So you just put on your gloves again. And the trade ties just all depends on what your facility has. Um, what we have is completely different from what the video has, and I'll just show you how to use what we have in our kit. All right, so in this, you have the pipette cleaner, and this is for the inner, inner cannula, so you can go down in there and get out any gunk. The pipettes you can use to clean. You, um, a lot of times people that have bigger hands, they can use these to help get the ties underneath that um, opening there or to help get your dressing underneath the, the tray itself. Okay, then you have your tray dressing. So you don't want to use that as, as a cleaning cloth at all. Then you have your ties. So if this isn't too dirty, you can set these here. All right, and then you have your gauze for cleaning. So what you would do basically is just start, start with your screw tips. And again, you basically have a clean hand and a sterile hand working through this. So you always want to support your, your trach. So with, with the Q-tips, you can move the gown down. You're basically just going underneath and going all the way around as much as you can and using your clean hand to help maneuver things around. But you're just getting any gunk under there. If it's a fresh trach and they have some dried blood or anything, you're, that's what you're using these Q-tips for. If you toss it, get another one, and you do the same thing. And you're just going all the way around this to try to get out any junk or debris that's under there. And you're just cleaning that. And you do that with each cloth. Then if you need to, you can take some gauze and you can rub, um, rub some more, the surrounding skin. So you're just getting all the way around. Then you take out, using this hand, notice I have this hand down supporting. Use this hand, and you're going to take out the inner cannula. And you'll know beforehand if this is just one you take out, toss away, you get a brand new one. If so, you just throw this away, get a brand new one, and insert it. Now, this is called an inner cannula because on the inside, there's an, it goes inside another tube, which is why this does not have to be sterile, per se, because this is not going to touch the inside of the patient's skin. It, go, it literally fits inside another tube. So that's why it's called the inner cannula. So you just would take it out, and you could use this hand, pour some saline over that, and then you could take your little pipette, anything that's on the inside, and clean it out. So this is a clean procedure. And that's the last thing you want to do, because if, if there's really a lot of gunk in there, you want that to be the last thing that falls in there. You don't want to take a cute tip now and put that stuff back on there. So you just take this, and you could, you know, wipe, uh, wipe the saline off if you like. And then you just put it back in there. All right. So now you have that back in there. Now you're ready to do your ties. So what you want to do is one side at a time. So all the cleaning is done. Now we just have to change the tie. So what some facilities may do, they may tell you to take one tie out and then put one in. It just depends on how loose the person's is or how much they move. Go ahead and tie down this side. All right, and then you ask your patient to help lift their head up. If you have a helper, they can help you with all this. I pull out the old one, and noticing I'm still helping to keep this secure. Because the last thing you want is for this trach to fall out. If this whole device, meaning the inner and the outer, falls out, mm -hmm. you can have a problem. All right, so I removed the old one, of that, and this is my other one. All right, and then you just tie this down. So you got that tied on both sides. Then you can take your scissors and cut the rest of the side of these strings. But you don't want to cut it so short that it's hard for the next person to change it. Then you have your dressing, and then you're just going to put it underneath.
Now, this thing here, I forgot to tell the other group, this is what they use to inflate it, the end, the outer cannula. Let's say if this was the outer part, it has a little balloon around the outside of it. They inflate it and that's what helps to hold it in place. So you don't ever want to take this and yank it and pull it, because if so, then you're going to um, basically take the air out of the balloon. So this needs to stay, don't cut it, don't do anything like that. Mm -hmm. So that stays. And then that's it. And you just ask your patient how you're doing. Everything is done. So the sterile part is the suctioning. After that, it's pretty much more of a clean technique. But you do everything all in one. And you want to do the suction first and then do your cleaning. All right. And the trachs, they will be sutured down. But it depends on how well the surgeon does it. If it's going to be for a long time, the person will have the trach or if it's temporary. So it just all depends on that. So you may see some little black knots. Um, that's connected to the trach and the patient's skin. Any questions at all about that? So that's how you would do that. So you either do this procedure for next week or you would do the Foley catheter and that's it. All right.